This is the After Brews, of course, sponsored in part by Trek CBD. Uh, you can find them at trekcbd.com and more episodes of Business and Brews, After Brews, and our new podcast, How to Build a Business During a Pandemic, at businessandbrewshow.com. My name, of course, is Ryan Smelt and Gavin Vincent, and this is Phil Odo with Closer Look General Contracting and Heather Odo with Phil with Closer Look General Contracting. Thanks for having us, guys. No problem. <laughs> no, we appreciate you guys. So <clears throat> we just do the after brew section, which is just a little bit more relaxing. Yeah. Talk, talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. Uh, but it's crazy, like what you were talking about as far as mindset. Uh, I'm a firm believe, believer that it's like 70 30. Like, I think 70% <clears throat> of it is mindset. And the other 30%, you can kind of figure out tactically how to do. Have you listened to. Uh, David Goggins can't mm-hmm. hurt me. Oh my gosh! Yes, I, yeah, you know he's a nut. <laughs> yes, the, yes. What you put into your subconscious, what you mm-hmm. tell yourself every day, the mm-hmm. thoughts. If you listen to the thoughts that are in your mind, mm-hmm. that is <clears throat> ultimately who you become. Mm-hmm. So if you have thoughts of, you know, I'm weak, I'm worthless. You know, ultimately that's going to be your destiny that's yeah, where that's you'll be if, if you program it into your mind that you can do anything that you can you know overcome the most difficult obstacles that it may di- be difficult but you can overcome them mm-hmm. then you're going to overcome them it's yeah. just it mindset is everything in who you are and what you will ultimately become yeah absolutely <clears throat> there's another book i was going to mention i forgot <clears throat> to mention it um that i'm reading now it's called uh vivid visions haven't heard of it it's uh it's by cameron cameron harold and that's uh, pretty short read i mean i've, I've knocked it out in like a couple of days but it, it's just of the mindset of painting that picture of like where you want to be 10 25 however long yeah. from there and like to the point where you get it down to the detail of like if a newspaper was going to write an article about your business or about whatever you're working on, how would that actually look and actually writing one about the business and actually figuring out all the little nuances? Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. But yeah, I mean, but it just goes along with that, whatever you focus on or whatever you put in your head, that's kind of what becomes reality. That's it's where your energy goes, right? Yeah. Where you focus, yeah. you know, we'll do a lot of work with that through different meditation courses. Yeah. And, um, Man, I used to think it was all hocus pocus. So, My so son you, calls uh, me a hippie. You guys have done meditation courses? I meditate every night before I go to bed. Meditate awesome. every morning when yeah. I wake up. That's 4 a.m. Awesome. the alarm clock goes off. And, you know, that's when I grab the headphones and I start, you know, between 4.30 and 5, out of bed, get a workout or hit the shower, depending what day it is. Yeah. But um, he showers every day. It's just the workouts. Very just the basic. workout part is the part that varies. <laughs> just so we're clear, he showers every day. <laughs> Good catch, Heather. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's like, I know I'm married to for a reason. I know. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that, that's one of the things I'm trying to become more disciplined about. Like, uh, I've, it's kind of spotty, but I'm trying to become disciplined about doing it every single morning and every single evening. But yeah, you're right. It, it's amazing how that workout and that meditation just sets up the whole day. It does. It, it just literally feels a lot better. I can always tell the days that I did and the days that I did not. Yeah. yeah it feels like it pulls you away from <laughs> the, you know, the minutia of, of the details of things that you're worried about taking care of, you know, or things that you're stressed out about. And it just kind of, it's just like backing up and giving you a, a much broader perspective of, you know, I'm here today. This is my life. Yeah. Um, these are the things that matter. This is how I'm taking care of myself. I talked to somebody just today and when we were outside riding bikes um, in the woods, mountain biking today. And she said that she was going to set a New Year's intention Mm -hmm. to touch a tree every day. And I thought, that's "That's pretty cool. Because, you know, whether that means sitting outside in your yard Mm -hmm. or, you know, taking a walk around your neighborhood or going out on a hike or a mountain bike ride, you know, just getting out in nature, which, you know, for me is, is kind of the way that I, that I, 
meditate and, and really, you know, get centered. And I was like, ah, and so touch a tree. That's yeah. a pretty good, you know. It's funny though. It is funny how nature actually inspires us and just calms us. It's, uh -huh. it's, it's really funny. It, it really is crazy. Like I'm trying to also do two hours of just being out in nature with a notebook, no distractions and just like whatever problems or whatever that comes to the head, just journaling and like just really sitting down and really giving things thought like with no distractions, no phone, no music, no nothing. Huge and difference. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I've done it a couple of times and it's crazy the things that come to your mind and that, you know, you've kind of been plan in your subconscious that kind of come to the forefront mm -hmm. after those two hours. You got to give that stuff space to bubble up because when we're so busy taking care of all the mm -hmm. details of day-to-day -day life and running ragged and especially with three kids, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's we go hard. Kids and a household <laughs> and a business. Yeah. Yeah. And so all that that's other job, stuff. That's a job in itself. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's for sure. So when you guys go to Colorado, you just kind of, no, you can't here. go Ryan. <laughs> yeah, we just leave some food in the house. Okay. No, they uh, a bowl of water on the floor. Yeah. Okay. That Isn't that sense. all they need? I don't know. I don't, know. I don't have any kids. <laughs> well, the good thing is they're teenagers. So I mean, I have a right. five year old. So it's like God. I can't wait till they become teenagers. But you know, until they become a teenager, but so enjoy the journey. Care, yeah, careful what you ask for. I'm yeah. Sure is what exactly. <laughs> you know, I think at five year old, at five years old, they still think you're cool. But when they become teenagers, I heard they don't so want much. anything to do with you, man. Yeah. Not so much. <laughs> We're hoping that maybe in 10, 15, 20, 50 years, it be comes like, back. Hey, our like, parents it, really did know what they were yeah, talking about. I think about. it's like in your thirties, you start to realize, you know what? They probably they, they knew what they were talking about. I mean, uh, maybe I've. I mean, for me, it was a little bit earlier than that, but you're right. Yeah, it was That's my like, late 20s, damn. but I think most people's like yeah. late 20s, 30s. Hey, Dad. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see the sacrifices they made. Uh, <laughs> I do, too. I always yeah. like to play this mental game with myself. Like, I, like whatever age I am, I try to backtrack and figure out what my parents were doing when they were that age. Mm -hmm. like, oh, that's what they were doing. It's oh, weird, gosh. huh? Yeah, it is weird. <laughs> they seemed so old at the time, yeah. and now we're doing it. See, and we're that's, that's how you know that we catch on and learn, because... I'm 34, and by the time my dad was my age, I know he had at least three of us. I'd have to do the math because my little sister is 10 years younger than me, so there's a little bit of a gap there. But um, I know he had at least three kids. Uh, nope. Hard Not even imagine. trying to do that. <laughs> That's <laughs> work, man. I don't know how you do one. You get, he had three. <laughs> like, <laughs> how'd, you, how'd you pull that off? I don't even know. Well, I mean, I do know. His mom took care of us, and he was a truck driver, so yeah. he just left. He went to work. <laughs> <laughs> that's how he did it. Gotta, ask I your mom how she work. did it. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah, you need to ask that's your mom a better she question. Yeah. Does she have any sanity <laughs> left? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all the hair turns gray, and then, you know, yeah. that's oh, the yeah. evidence that we wore out. But she still cooks for me, so I couldn't have been too bad. Yeah, you're doing something <laughs> right, man. My mother still brings food over to the office, wherever. She bakes cookies. She bakes cookies. She's on the scene all the time. Oh, she come yeah. barging in in the middle of a meeting. Yeah. So like, uh, I would like, like those kind of loves rain. Oh, you're interrupting. Oh, you got cookies. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all right, it's okay. You're interrupting. Oh, cookies. Oh, cookies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she knows how to pave the way. Yeah. Pardon that interruption. These cookies are delicious. <laughs> so uh, I, I think one of my favorite things to discuss, and you guys talked about it a little bit, is uh, the the people aspect. Because I'm, I'm pretty big on people and whether it's managing them. Of course, you guys have, you know, employees and customer relationships mm -hmm. that you have to cultivate. So... I'm definitely interested to hear, you know, how did you go from bad management to good management? You know, what are some things you learned along the way? Man, it's a process. Um, trial by fire. I mean, you don't know what you don't know. Um, and that goes for employees, subcontractors, clientele. Um, either you're going to be complacent and you're going to keep learning the same lesson over and over again, or maybe not learning a lesson, but receiving the same lesson over and over again until you learn where you have to adjust course. And, um, you know, I think when we 
did some soul searching and figured out what our core values are and um, decided what culture that we wanted to um, to uphold in the company that it just it, it it made a big difference and if you hire and fire by those values and by that that culture then you're going to go further you're going to enjoy what you're doing more mm-hmm. you're going to have people that fit in that mold that that you're looking for i mean if 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 accountability is one of your core value, values um you're going to find people that are accountable and if you're going to live up to your own core values you're going to cut the people that aren't accountable and you're going to find somebody who is um what was it that you learned to say no to anything that doesn't fit with your vision yeah yeah anything that you don't want i mean you gotta just have to learn how to say no to it yeah that's a tough muscle to develop that no muscle it is it's tough it is and yet it's so important Mm -hmm. um in in so many different aspects of life and you know it's kind of like you have to lead by example too you know you have to um it's like you know like with parenting you can give you know 100 million warnings but if you never follow through with setting those expectations and you know expecting that they're going to follow up with them then you know you you don't really get anywhere because people just learn to discount what you have to say Um, there's no accountability there's no rules right right yeah exactly right we can get away with whatever we just have to you know give lip service and um but just like when you recognize a you know an employee or somebody in the in the that you're associating with that doesn't fit with those values and with the culture that you want to cultivate when you do find somebody who does and you bring them on board it's just i like i'm it's so exciting i can't even believe i'm like oh you know we found these people and they're really great um and you know you get excited about developing your staff and working with them and mentoring them and um you know giving back at this point it's pretty neat yeah i think that's that's more exciting than anything else that we're doing right now I, you know you've you've done you know a bathroom you've done 10 bathrooms you've done a kitchen you've done 10 kitchens 20 kitchens 100 kitchens mm-hmm. whatever it's all the same parts and pieces but when you start dealing with the human resource aspect of things and the psychology behind it um holding people accountable and you know it doesn't mean you got to be a jerk about it right no it just means that you you have to bring things to people's attention because everybody's got a different level of awareness and find out what people's motives are Mm -hmm. you know you got a guy that's not going to return your phone calls well maybe this isn't the guy for us that's you know but if you've got somebody who makes mistakes and they want to be accountable and they you know they listen they perform they show up on time willing to learn then you know those are the guys that ultimately that you're going to work with you're going to develop and those are the guys that are going to lead the charge and Mm -hmm. and you know do the the heavy lifting for your business they're going to be right there alongside of you and if you're a poor leader you know you're not going to be developing those people and you're not going to be there when they need you you're not going to be there to answer questions or to help them through a problem you know but if it's your business, it's in your best interest. Yeah, you know? yeah. I'm, I'm very, I'm a very big proponent of hire for culture, like mm-hmm. the actual culture of the person. And I can teach you how to do the skill, yeah. and I, te- I can teach you how to do the job. But the you have to align with the actual core values of the company and and the culture, because you don't want to bring in a bad fit for the culture when you spend so much time, energy, and effort trying to get the culture right with the company. You bring in one bad fit. Just throws everybody off it does it does and it can be damaging to the people who are showing up every day and exactly. and taking the initiative and you know putting their best foot forward um so you got to be you, know, you got to be mindful of all that hire hire slow fire fast that's right yep yep slow to hire quick to fire yeah and it, it <laughs> it's it's difficult to let people go because ultimately you're you're but you're, you're, but you're doing them a favor because, because you know yeah. if if you feel that way about them not succeeding in the company, they feel that, you yep. know what I mean? Like it's not a good fit. They feel that it's not a good fit. The quicker that you're in that relationship and they're able to find the right fit, the, the easier, to, the better it is for everybody. And I, they'll you know, flourish. So they'll flourish and, in another, you know, <clears throat> wherever yeah. they're a better fit at. Yep. And they're uh, right, Ryan. Sorry, I just have to keep him in check. Sometimes. No, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I learned over the years that, uh, the you're fired conversation never has to go like that you know i've i've seen 
I've been witness to owners of companies talking to people and watching them take, you know, using the psychology of the conversation. And now the person's like, oh, yeah, like I always wanted to start my business at the beach where my mom lives. And I've just been up here since I graduated school. So uh, you're right. I should probably just move back there and finally give it my best go at my dream. Yeah. And I'm like, how in the hell did he do that? But yeah. it's like just knowing uh, mm -hmm. what to say and how to say it uh, to people. And now it's like, I mean, I, I held a, a conversation with someone recently where they were like, hey, my goal is kind of shifted. I want to do this. And it involves me moving. And we were holding a conversation about like, what does the future of this person and the company kind of look like? And now it basically just fixed itself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I, I agree with what you said, slow to slow to hire, quick to fire. Um, and, and that that conversation can be on good terms so they don't get on right. glass door and rip you a new one or leave you a bad <laughs> google review or something like that That's so it doesn't crazy. hurt the company they feel good about it there's a professional relationship there and yeah. um that's i mean what what did you what's like some of the hard lessons that you guys had to learn when it came to you know just managing your employees you know that's uh that's a good question. Um, I think it comes to a point where you want to give people what they need, but you need to get what you need to get out of them. That's why mm -hmm. you have them there ultimately. Um, but everybody's dealing with something. And the pandemic is case in point. You've got mm -hmm. people that are scared and everybody's got a different perspective on everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, you, you know, it's, you just kind of go by the feel, what feels right. And you go by what people are producing and their level of commitment. Um, but you know, we've had this year, we've had some curveballs. We've had a lot of curveballs in the past, you know, for example, when money was being embezzled from the company, you know, I knew deep down inside that there was something wrong and that I needed to do something. But, you know, what are you going to do? Is it, do you do this now? Do you create ripples here or do you fill a position? Do you dig deeper? Well, you know, maybe from a psychological perspective, you just don't want the answer to that question right mm -hmm. now. You're not ready to face it. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you just... You live and you learn. It's like anything else. I really admire people who have a certain level of awareness. And I mean, I don't mean like awareness, like, you know, oh, somebody back there is going to break a bottle over my head. I mean, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> hey, the awareness of what's going on, picking up on on the signals that people are putting out there for you, their, their body language, their... Um, you know, the way that they react when you ask them to carry out a task for you, mm -hmm. you know, you just, you, you develop these skills. It's like you were saying a minute ago, Ryan, with letting people go, you know, where it could go one of two ways. You can, it could be a, a, at a deficit or you can make somebody realize that it's going to be a benefit to both parties right. if you part ways. Um, you know, you, you just, you develop these skills and, um, People who do it when they're young, ultimately, I feel like that they've got more time for success. But I don't think that we start to think that we really start to learn how to use our minds until we're, you know, nearing middle age. You know, your your late thirties, early forties. You know, your forties, fifties. Um, those are really prime earning years mm -hmm. for a lot of people because you just you're just getting this whereabouts and how to function and how to read people, how to, you know, how to, how to set your mind, um, on a task. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's deep, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, it is deep. You know what else is deep? Um, you guys said that you were in Colorado hiking mountains, right? Mm -hmm. 
At that point, did you realize that the earth was flat or did you realize that it was round? We're flat earthers. <laughs> flat earthers. Ryan, we're not, I found your people. We're not. <laughs> She's like, we're not. We're not. <laughs> I mean, we've been, I, I tell you what, you, you, you want to learn a lot about yourself, do something where you're not sure if you're going to make it out alive. I mean, you're, you're going to learn some things. So Heather and I have literally been on the side of mountains with, uh, you know, thousand foot of exposure, um, on ledges, no wider than that table. Um, and had no other way but to either, you know, climb 30 feet vertical up this cool war, which is snow covered, or, you know, turn back, which there's even more exposure mm -hmm. to go through. And the ground is moving and, you know, in the sense that it's just, it's so dry up there, you're above tree line. So there's no, nothing holds the rock and sand and stuff in place. It's just, you know, so you put your foot somewhere and then it moves, it slides. Um, so, you know, there was, I've never, I can say that I've never, ever experienced just primal fear. I mean, you have those moments when somebody, you know, almost hits your car on the highway. Yeah. You know, you have that rush of adrenaline and then mm -hmm. it subsides because by the time you feel that fear, it's already it's gone. Already over, yeah. um, you know, and this, this one particular climb that we did, we were very ill prepared, very <laughs> novice. <laughs> Seemed like a good idea at the time, which is what you know, precipitates about 50% of our decisions that we Great make. Great story. Just, yeah. <laughs> seems like a good idea. Um, but, you know, to feel that fear just, you know, minute after minute, hour after hour, not knowing, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to be okay. And I mean, we literally put our, each other's lives in each other's hands. Um, you know, there were times when well, I probably put my life in my your hands. Well. <laughs> I can't really do a lot to pull him up, but you know, it's um, and and I think maybe that's part of the reason that we knew that we could do this, yeah, this together, yeah, because you know we knew what the other one was made of. Yeah. You know, when, where the rubber meets the road. What's you know, what are you going to do when it's really tough? Yeah. When you're all out of ideas, you know, we know we know that we can count on each other. It's definitely something and that to be we're said about work working with your spouse. That's something to be said about. Yeah, I mean, either it's going to go good or it's going to go poorly. I mean, you don't, you, you know, but it is what you make of it. Like anything else that you do on this earth, you've, you have to learn to, you got to learn to communicate. I mean, you got to learn humility. You've got to learn, you know, you've got to learn to listen to other people's ideas and take advice and try new things and, um, and to fail and to fail, to fail forward. I mean, yep. you know, you're not going to do everything right. You're, you know, you're, I mean, what were your first 10 podcasts like? They're horrible. I, I can't <laughs> even watch them. I'm the only actually, thing good uh, about him is uh, Ryan's beard. One of our, one he of, does have an <clears throat> epic beard. He does, he I've been does. staring at it like <laughs> yeah. for the last time. I mean, hour. I keep talking about it because I'm jealous, but that's yeah. neither here nor there. I'll, I'll do a, a how-to video, but well, I mean, that's, what the, that's what the, that's why we need that's why we need money for the show is for beard oil. Mm. Your beard, man. That's, that's, that's not the true. show. That's not true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our first episode, I'm actually remastering because I'm going to start editing video for people, and so I want to use it to show like this is what this looked like, this is yeah. what it looks like now, and sounds like, and all that. Uh, so I'm going to use it as like a a portfolio video. Um, but it's literally just like, I think my GoPro set up with the microphone or. Yeah, it was one yeah. microphone. It was just my blue room. raspberry and we were. And a, and a laptop. That was it. Yeah. yeah. It was just like ready, say, but, but that was our first episode. Yeah. My first video of content that I put out on a Facebook page. So it wasn't even my very, very first video. Uh, cause those were even worse, but it was actually a uh, toy holding the phone and we were in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is me. This is who I am. We're kind of starting over here, whole new Facebook page and everything, putting out content. So, I mean, it's this, this has been th three, four years in the making. What a fun adventure though. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, really, we've come a long way. Yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. I met this guy at some, in that. some freaking meetup, and then yeah. here we are. What two years later? So, so indirectly, Michael is responsible for me and you getting to know each other, and you don't even really know him no, that I, well. I, I don't know who Michael is. 
know. He's the one. He was like, "Hey, there's this meetup about Amazon. You should go to it." Yeah. And I even went to one with him one time, but that's where I met you. Yeah. And then he. It was kinda, love at first sight. Just so you guys know. Yeah. Love, yeah. 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 Hello. <laughs> make a movie. Make it. Make a comedy. That's sitcom. Right. He had me at uh, Tactical Arbitrage. Uh, <laughs> and then we. I mean, we would get one time. We got together at a co-working space, and I was like, "Hey, I just want to understand this. Like, can you tell me, like, what do you look for?" And I took copious notes, and then. Um, you know, we would talk Amazon. We're in a little chat group together with a whole bunch of other Amazon sellers. And then, you know, I'm growing, running my own business over here on the side. And well, one day he's just like, hey, uh, we should do a podcast and drink beer and talk about business. All right. Well, you don't have to twist my arm. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't going to do two because I was struggling to put out enough content for my own show. Which, in comparison, surprisingly enough, was getting more attention than I originally thought. Mm -hmm. um, but basically what he was offering was free help. He's like, I'll co-host it with you. So now, you know, if, if I need something to happen or he needs something to happen, we can reach out to each other. Plus, we met Nick and Scott with Trek CBD. So, we, you know, of course, there's plenty of places we can do it, but we can do it here um we get to talk to them and stuff so a lot of good relationships have come out of it i've learned a ton about audio mm -hmm. engineering which i do not have a degree in <laughs> but see you've learned it because you yeah. had to learn it yeah. Yeah. because you did it and then uh and then our producer as well charles yeah we were sorry i didn't get to meet charles today yeah no, unfortunately that's him. No, well, you yeah, know we uh out. we we aspire to put together a podcast at some point someday ourselves but more from the the comedy perspective yeah okay and that and that genre yeah <laughs> we uh we, we we've been on a lot of crazy adventures yeah a lot of stories well i'm sure there's a lot of stories told there. <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> i hope so i know so i look so. forward to it but good. Yeah. We go? yeah we can wrap it up i think the last thing i want to say is uh uh start putting it out i tell everyone this start now like just put it out um, cause I started my first podcast episode was me and my phone cause anchor the app that we mm -hmm. use to put this stuff out is literally just download, hit record. Um, at the end of the day, the attention that you get from it is more valuable than the quality of the app episode. So that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. yeah nothing is. else. I mean, plus like for you guys, this whole setup right here with the wireless mics, it, it wasn't super expensive. It, they look awesome. They do. But I got it's, them off of yeah. Amazon. It was like, you know, I did a little bit of research to make sure that it was going to have quarter inch and XLR because I knew about that stuff. And I was like, I needed to hook up to my mixing board, um, which is super complicated. But you don't even have to learn all that. Yeah, he's speaking German like, to me right now. Whatever, <laughs> whatever you guys want. Like, if you want a couple <laughs> microphones or whatever, and then just click record, like, go at it. I encourage everyone that says they want to put out content to just put it out but I'm yeah, especially a, you guys i mean you guys have an awesome story i mean it's yeah i, I, I wonder definitely tune into that i wonder how many of them end with you guys uh, drink then their we psyche? almost died huh then we almost died not yeah, that like, many they most of them just start with well i mean i guess this would be okay are we allowed to <laughs> are we allowed to say curse words i wouldn't <laughs> i wouldn't use any profanity in here it's not the type of message <laughs> that we want to put out all right then never mind <laughs> Wait, is there going to be on your podcast? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, we're definitely doing that. <laughs> well, now I'm a little disappointed. Is that what it's going to be called, though? Well, I guess oh. this sounds like a good idea. <laughs> it might it's be. It's not a bad idea. That's why I was asking. <laughs> more vulgarity like than that. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. Uh, but, yeah, we can. Re well, actually, uh, before I hit stop, uh, let's do the name thing. This is the After Brews, of course, sponsored in part by Trek CBD. Uh, you can find them at trekcbd.com and more episodes of Business and Brews, After Brews, and our new podcast, How to Build a Business During a Pandemic, at businessandbrewshow.com. My name, of course, is Ryan Smelt. And Gavin Vinson, and this is Phil Odo with Closer Look General Contracting. And Heather 